right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Ormy, and thank you very much for stopping by. We are lining up for Carabao Cup final. So maybe in the grand scheme of things, doesn't really matter too much. But we are still on for our unbeaten season. And right now, there's a draw at Anfield, which stopped us from being perfect, as well as that draw at home to Brighton we saw recently. We got our revenge over Brighton in the semi-final of this cup. That was quite uh, satisfying, to be fair. But it's not the perfect season. The perfect season, of course, would be a win in every competition against every opposition. Home and away, a perfect record. And those two draws block that somewhat. But with the amount of games we've played and won this season, as well as those two draws, and the fact that we remain without a loss upon our record, and with the handful of games yet to play, I believe 11 Premier League games, a second leg of a Champions League knockout against Real Sociedad, that we have a goal advantage and three away goals to play with, after that first leg. Not too bad of a trip in the FA Cup to Sheffield United. And this Carabao Cup game. I do believe we can become invincibles. And that has become our goal. After the Brighton game, it became our goal to become in Invincibles. Now you may be looking at the title of this video and thinking hat trick of hat tricks. Well, this would be our fourth League Cup win. But this would be a hat trick. This would be the third in a row. Now we're not playing Chelsea. Chelsea have been our opponents both of the times. Uh, we'll play Man City, but this would be the first hat-trick we could get this season. The second is the FA Cup. We've beat Man United and we've beat Liverpool. Now, we did also beat Man United in the first season, so again, it would be our fourth FA Cup, but it would be another hat-trick. And the third hat-trick of course. Beat Liverpool and Man United. And then last season beat Man United with Chelsea in third. So this could be the first hat-trick. Of a hat-trick of hat-tricks. And that's what I like. So... I really hope we don't lose now, because I've already decided what the thumbnail and title of the video are going to be. So, pray for me, um, and we'll see how it goes. But yeah, if you haven't already, please do smash the like button, hit subscribe as we get into things here. As you saw by the form, things are good. Mr. Kylian Mbappe has hit 23 and 27 league games. He's hit six in seven Champions League. He scored in the Super Cup. He scored in his only FA Cup game. And he's two from five in this after scoring in the Community Shield as well. Uh, he's doing rather better for France. You've got to give him his due there. 97 caps, 55 goals. It's not a bad season. It's not bad season by any stretch of the imagination. It's his best professional season. But I feel if you're buying Mbappe and you're paying that money, a 7.3 is a little disappointing. It really is a little disappointing. Giovanni Reyna 
is Ocho with a 7.56 for the Premier League, 7.67 overall. Um, and he's having a very good season. I'm very happy with his contribution, to be fair. I think he's been a revelation in midfield. Uh, the league's picked up yellow cards, which you don't love. But I don't have much issue bringing him in the back. He's not played, again, amazingly 7-18. No goals in 24 games. That's to be expected. I do tend to keep the centre-backs back. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is part of the experiment of buying the world's best players and seeing if they improve us. I don't know if they have. Yes, we're winning more games. Yes, we're, we're kind of a bit more comfortable in our results. But... Individually, they're playing okay, and they're not really taking us to the next level as much as I would have thought they would have. So, a couple of big results, of course, along the way. Absolutely stomping Barcelona. Playing well all over the place, but um, there are a few games that haven't gone our way, of course. Referee really helped against Charlton. I can't believe, still can't believe they did that. But we've been unable to put some teams away early enough for my liking. And late in the game, teams are feeling they can come at us and kind of dictate games to us. And I don't love that. So, yeah, when we look at the goals for the team... Like Hassan's been impressive and possibly more impressive than Gio Reyna. And Ben beachy has been impressive. Maybe not as impressive as Mbappe. But again, he had that kind of year last year. And this year's been slightly more disappointing. Perhaps he's missing his strike partner in King Hennig, who's now enjoying life at PSG. But the player we brought in from PSG and him, they're still working really well. They're just not quite where, again, I thought they would be. Hammervinger slotted right into that midfield and done a fantastic job, of course. Like I say, I've got no real complaints with De Ligt, but... You know, are they really better than other options? Because... Joel Richmond's been playing all across that back line at a tenth of the wage and is nowhere near as good a player and yet has been as effective for us, apparently. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about these signings and this experiment. If we do finish off as Invincibles, get a hat-tricks of hat-tricks in these you know, domestic competitions and seal our second Champions League final, Becoming, you know, dominant in domestic cups, becoming Premier League champions, European champions, and the current world champions. Matching what Liverpool just did in real life. I think I can declare the experiment a success. But I don't think we needed to do this to get there which is very interesting, having dropped so much money on this quartet. But look at the tail end of last season. 62, 143, uh, 313, unless I'm miscalculating. 391 million. 391 million. Yikes. That's uh, a little bit more than I, I, I was kind of expecting to pay.
Not that we badly need them. And we've lost more than that. We've lost over double that to the game sort of keeping us below a billion and three times now throwing um, money into this fake account. I think 500 million the first time, then 200 million, then three mil uh, 300 million. So I believe we're about a billion in this, this safeguard account for the future, which, of course, you never get access to. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know, really. I don't know what I'd rather do with that. But we've got the money in the bank. We've spent it on these players as well. Uh, and this will be the lineup for the cup final, I believe. We're going to go in with Carlos Victor, who I think has only just got his bump up to 75. I think he's played his games now. 42 appearances over a 7 rating. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, Mitch joins. The youngster still has a lot of potential, but is solid. Is playing okay. Is doing his job. Um, you know, quite a decent season for him, I think. Cosme, absolutely fantastic. The second of our two super Brazilians. Um, yeah, earns his money, plays well, shows up, gets the job done, no fuss. Hardly ever misses a game. Uh, Chris Metham coming into the lineup. 6.99 in six starts, 13 appearances. Solid. I'm glad we kept him because we're needing him at times like this. Uh, Delict is actually suspended for this, and I didn't really want to dive too deep into the reserves. So he gets his call up. Um, we'll see. Hopefully that will be okay. Um, Brian Facey. Absolutely magic man at left back. Still only 21. What a beast he is. Uh, 7.3 rating on the season for him. So both fullbacks are a little tired. They're not fully fit. Mepham is a little lacking in match sharpness, as are a lot of this, um, this team right now. And a couple of players in midfield. Also not fully fit right now. That midfield trio, Declan Rice on the right side, Lewis Cook on the left, and in the middle, deep line playmaker, Eduardo Camavinga. Solid production. I really like what they've been able to do. Uh, I think they, they run games. They dictate the pace of the teams. Um, Munoz can step in there, but right now, Cook, I think, is my best option for a big game like this. Uh, he hasn't been playing a ton this season. Either him and Declan Rice both have been kind of rotated out. We've spread a lot of game time out between those midfielders. Um, Michael Sant's been playing in that midfield three. We've had Bevan in there for a decent amount of games off the bench. And Munoz has played his fair share. So we're kind of rotating those around. Less rotation... For the front three, though, Gio Reyna, absolutely magic. And again, Sant been stepping into that role a little bit at times. But uh, he's been producing probably our best player this season and the one I have the least worry for in terms of was I right to purchase him? He is English. He does fit what we're doing. Um... And, yeah, we spent a lot of money, but if I could have spent it on one player out of the four, and it just be Gio Reyna, I don't think I could have been accused of abandoning the Swansea way. Whereas right now, I kind of personally feel that I have, and I know, given some feedback on Twitch and uh, on YouTube, as well as online on, on the Bluebird over at Twitter, we have... We have heard some grumblings about that. But, um, yeah, as, as I've tried to explain, the Swansea way is to get you to the top. To take you to the top and to become the best team in the world. The Swansea way won't really get that done in real life. But it will do it in FM. So I could have stuck with it, but I wanted a slight bit of realism. That to be the very best, you had to get the very best. And the Swansea way is the pathway that opens up any possibility, including Mbappe. That was kind of the point I was making. So, 
who who knows if it was the right thing to do or not we will see but yeah at the end of the day it's done and Mbappe is having a great season and if it was almost anybody else and if I hadn't spent so much money I think I'd be pretty happy with that production you know we're almost a goal a game we're doing well it just it's just that we've had goal a game strikers before and I haven't had to pay this much and I haven't had to like abandon that principle core principle of the team to do it and alongside of Ben Beach like I say a downgrade from last season but still a phenomenal season I can't say too much uh, and you do see the partnership forming and Bappe and Beachy really working well together on the bench Alan Ramsden he's played one game he played well um yeah long-term backup perhaps who knows but good enough to sit on that bench good enough to to play some games if it all goes down not someone you want to run the entire season with at this stage though I think uh, a little bit below the Resiquit level James Matthews done well so far Michael Sant has done well so far um really happy with the contributions there 19 goals between them very happy uh, Munoz as I say and Robert Bevan come up in midfield do a good job there they offer me different things in that midfield and I, I quite like to see a little bit more of Matthews and Bevan they haven't had too many starts so maybe I'll be drip feeding them some over the course of this season as well because yeah five starts three starts I think they've deserved more I think they've deserved more I've kept my first 11 together but they probably do deserve some more starts Joel Richmond fills in along the back line he plays at right back a lot even when my right backs are fit which means my assistant must really really love him um and he's done well so far so I like having him on the bench that flexibility is really good and Elon Starkey handful of games our weakest performance in the squad so far but I don't know I like him his future's bright we paid a lot of money and I hope he can succeed the lick as I say is suspended Ryan Hughes Tom Ferry are both ineligible for this game they have both been playing in the reserves to get some fitness and Levi Towers is unfit not in great form and doesn't push Bevan and Munoz off the bench doesn't get a shot in the team very often four games three as a sub tail end of the season probably need to drip feed some games maybe we get Lewis Cook out to their 29 doing okay but if we can get Munoz in instead of them perhaps and then Bevan Sant and Towers on the bench could be pretty interesting so yeah we will see get a little bit of money from the John Johnson deal and with all else being said already with games in the league Liverpool winning their game so they are 11 points behind but they have played a game more we can move back to our 14 point advantage um Man United at Everton Burnley at home to Chelsea so chance that a couple of the uh, other teams may drop some points I doubt it but they may so we'll see kind of how that comes together I'm not changing my lineup we are going in as we are get ready what's going to be a tough game with four players here Camavinga and Reiner in midfield and both fullbacks joins and Facey not fully fit Mepham, Rice, Cook, Reina, also not Matt Sharp. Sant, the only Matt Sharp player on the bench, but at least they're fully fit. And we've got people that can play in all our positions to cover injuries, and we've got game changers, I believe, on the bench too. Well, this will be a very tough game. think that we can 
get the job done. Just gonna ensure that all of these are set up. And let's get into the game. So, they've got a good team. As you expect, this is Man City. This isn't like a bad team at all. Pereira, Diaz, Laporte, and Swift. Uh, with Donna Rumor in goal, Taliso de Jong, Silva, Nonto, Guedes, and Isaac. Edison, Ben Godfrey, the big signing at the back for them with Rodri. Liam Delap already scored against us this season, the young striker. Olivia, Nick Donald, and Pat Kirkpatrick. Few youngsters creeping into this lineup. A couple of names I expect. Expect to see in the first 11 dropped to the bench. So maybe we're going with our first 11 and they're going with a slight rotation. That does give us a tiny advantage. Put a little bit of pressure on the boys. Have faith. I have faith. Mbappe and Beachy. They respond well to a little bit of pressure sometimes. So we head to Wembley. Beachy and Mbappe, Reina Cook, Camavinga, Rice. Very, very decent indeed. Up against Isaac Quiris, Nonto, Silva, De Jong, and Toliso. Two solid goalkeepers, two solid back fours. Two hard-working midfielders, a uh, set of midfielders. Carter and Swift just change. They really just change their fullbacks for some reason. Their left back went to right back, and their right back's just gone to left back. In the opening two minutes. Okay. I've never seen that happen before. They're playing inverted fullbacks, of course, so they want their their stronger foots coming through on the midfield, but I mean that suits us perfectly if they're gonna be cutting inside, because that's where our midfielders are. The Mizalas be marking those fullbacks anyway. Okay, we will see how this goes then. We'll see how this goes, but I think it's not too bad. Brief moment of encouragement for the boys. They've got the ball. We're going to put some pressure. They do find Bernardo Silva. We do try and shut them down a little. But they're able to play it. That trio of midfielders passing it about here is Swift. The left back. And that's what happens when the left-footed left back is playing at right back, I guess. Carlos Vito, we don't love that ball. But Bici makes it work. Mbappe back to him. Beachy then finds a way. It's over the goalkeeper. He chips down a rumor, but Diaz is there to clear. Ruben making the best of that situation. Doesn't count as a shot or a shot on target. I think that's harsh. Um, and 25 minutes in, doesn't seem to be much going on. Gonna demand more from the boys. Gonna push up to attacking. They will get a corner. Swift almost scores. Oh my god. Good save from Carlos Vito. And then Facey with a block to get rid of it. Cosme's header out. Isaac will win that race. But only briefly. We do see them out. Now they've got to throw in. Sustained pressure here. And there is... Alexander Isaac. It is going to be offside, I believe. And the ball went back to Guerres. I believe he was offside. That's why I didn't really react there, and it is going to be ruled out. Okay. That's good. And this ball is played back in here. Just offside. But... And City are in charge of this game, you know. 
No shots, none on target at all. I think. I think it's time just to shout at the boys. Time to shout at the boys. The fullback inspired and motivated, so is the goalie. Motivation throughout the rest of the team. Ben Beachy up front. And Bappe on a 6.4. And again, I, I really think that we need to judge this a little later, but. There we go. 13 seconds. 13 seconds it takes. From kickoff, a few passes, gets up to the strikers. Mbappe lays it off. Cook's running forward. And that's all it takes. 13 seconds later. Left-footed strike into the bottom corner. First shot, first goal. Why did it take so long? For us to get in this game. I really don't understand that. I really don't understand that. We're so tired. As a team. We are so tired as a team right now. Drop down to positive. They will get. Another highlight. And Carlos Vito. I don't punt it long. Find somebody. There we go. Kamavinga. It was Cook. Ben Beachy. Oh, Beachy turns his man there, does well. He's gonna go himself. Toliso hangs a leg out. And that is a penalty. That is 100% a penalty. Beachy running at speed. Unbelievable. Mbappe looks to have a knock. And it will be him, though, that steps up. Donnarumma with the save, baby, yes. Mbappe with the finish. Knocks in his own rebound. 2-0 up. Mbappe off of Matthews. Mepham's on a booking. Joel Richmond comes on. Lewis Cook as well. Munoz comes on. Um, yeah. I'm going to drop down to Cautious. I am going to push up Reina as a shadow striker. Because he's not had a great game. And Beachy and Matthews playing together, that might help things. In fact, they're not going to like playing that way around. But that's the way they're going to play around. Um, try and get Beachy forward a little more. And see if we can get his rating up. So the front line didn't really work so far. They did combine to get Cook a goal. And Beachy wins a penalty and Mbappe pushes home a rebound after a great save of a bad penalty, to be fair. So, we go to Cautious to try and, you know, soak up a little bit of pressure. To uh, stop a little bit of the bleeding from this tired, tired team right now. You can see we're just playing it in space, making them chase. You can go forward, you can go wide, boys. You do know that, right? There are, like, open players in front of you. If you keep going back and going to the same players, you're going to get done. There we go. A long ball forward. Ben Beachy scores. Just like that, it works. Oh, my God, it did. How... How weird is this second half compared to the first? Just Messi with a, an almighty ball after lots of passing back and forth. Runs out of options, punts it up to Bambici. A little touch, just flicks the ball up in front of him and then drills it in past Donnarumma. But it's all about the ball from Byron Fessy. And Bici gets past his man. I think it's Ruben Diaz. Just out muscles him, gets in behind, and slots home. Suddenly we're 3 0 up, two goals in two minutes. After getting battered in the first half, Diaz almost gets his revenge. But I think now this game is comfortable enough. Giovanni Reina not really 
doing too many great things. Gonna bring him back into midfield. Think we're going to let him roam. How about that? The roaming playmaker inside the two Mezzalas, backed up by a half back. We drop back into midfield more and just let Reina soak. And there we go. Bit more pressure taken off him there. Less responsibilities up front, a little bit more in midfield, and a chance for him to play. But that's a terrible ball from Reina. We're just praising him looking a little better there. And they deserve the goal. That, that could have been offside, maybe slightly. I'm just going to drop down to defensive as well. But, um, yeah. He was onside. I was a bit more worried about the man at the far post. He wasn't interfering with play. But Reina's just had a very poor game. And this is a very underwhelming way to win this trophy again. But it is three in a row. Three League Cups. This puts us in a great position to complete our hat-trick. And against a very tough team that dominated us first half, we did show up and make a good accounting of this game in the end disappointed in Mbappe disappointed in Gio Reyna they didn't really show up took Beachy a while to get going and after that first half 13 seconds is what it took to actually get us on the board Highest ratings, 7.3 from Cook and Mbappe. That's not good enough. Brian Facey, 7.8, not got a problem there. And he was tired. But apart from that, it's the 7.3s. We've got some 7.1s. A couple of 6.7s. The three bench players did okay, but didn't really change the game. And yeah. Mbappe did technically miss that penalty. Puts in the rebound, but... Oh, you don't love it, do you? You don't love it. And Gio Reyna, poor performance today. Poor performance. I don't want to say good performance. I don't want to say, I don't want to be too harsh, but I don't want to say good performance. I think I'm just going to be saying, enjoy these moments. I think that's what I'm going to say. Enjoy these moments because it is another trophy. I will cautiously say, not happy with you, Gio. Not happy with you. I'm not happy with a lot of boys. Brian, you impressed me, Joe. Not happy. Oh. It's a win. It's a win. I can't be unhappy with the result. I'm really not happy with the performance. And it feels really weird to say that. They scored in the 92nd minute. We dominated that second half. We looked unplayable. We got ourselves some goals. We almost kept a clean sheet. And yet still, I'm not happy. But, hat-trick secured. Mbappe is not out for long. That is good. Get back into the game. Yeah. So, I'm not really sure why. We, we seem to be lacking in creativity. But when we did create chances, as we can see, six shots, five on target, three goals. We really did sort of take advantage of good positions when we got there. But no creativity from the midfield. I think we were kind of lacking there. 
Reina was just abysmal. Mbappe and Bici played well within themselves and couldn't get going. Munoz didn't change that when he came on. Matthews, again, seemed uh, not to be able to get too much done up front. So we kind of let ourselves down going forward. And they looked okay going forward. They generated chances. They had some good, you know, opportunities. But our defense was really good against them. Everything they did, we shut down. One goal ruled out for offside. One goal actually ends up counting. But I feel a little hard done by not to get the clean sheet there. As bad as we were first half. And we were bad. We were bad. So, I really don't know how I feel about this. Especially since, like, their fullbacks were pretty poor. After swapping flanks, they were pretty poor. Diaz and Laporte were not great either. Donna Ruma saved the penalty and almost got to the rebound. That's about it. That's all he really did. It's not like they stonewalled us, which I think we... We played well enough at the back to keep them quiet and got some good blocks in. Um, the Mbappe chip early on that Diaz blocked and the, the penalty save from Don Roma. I think that's all I saw them doing at the back. They didn't get forward. They didn't support too much. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Two teams. One that really didn't play well going forward. One that didn't seem at sorts at the back. Kind of cancelling each other out and negating each other. They by far looked the most dangerous team. But after half time, we got our team talking. We motivated the boys. Lewis Cook comes up with a big one. Driving through that defence. 13 seconds into the second half. Bembici, good work, good running. Wins a penalty. Don't know what Tolisso was doing, but... BG gets the penalty. Mbappe steps up, misses it, but puts home the rebound. And then late on, we're playing very defensive and... You know, keep ball, really. Basie's isolated a man right on him, pings it forward. BG round his man and threw on goal, onside, and slots home. When we looked good, we looked good. But we didn't look very good at times today. And I'm, uh, I'm a little disappointed. No fines for anyone, no praise for anyone, really. We said what we wanted to say to them in the changing rooms. That is a tricky game. That is a very tricky game. The Raul Luna money comes in. Um, which is way more than we got here. So that's good. Win a domestic cup two years ahead of schedule. We've got that. European Hall of Fame. We are the 20th rated manager in the Hall of Europe. We are closing in on Udo Latek and also not too far away names like Fabio Capello and Allegri and uh, Herrera as well. Don't think that we're going to be Climbing too high on this board, to be fair. Because if this is our last season, even if we do win a ton, I'm not sure we're going to make that much of an impact on here. But so far, three uh, League Cups in a row. We won the championship, as I have a, a visitor here, my cat. <laughs> Loudly mewing. I'm not sure if it'll pick up a recording, but kind of scared me. Um, one championship, one Champions League, two FA Cups, and two uh, Community Shields, two UEFA Super Cups, two Premier Leagues as well. That third FA Cup coming in our first season, which is quite remarkable, but put us on the pathway. And that Europa League as well. So, yeah, I guess we've got a hat-trick of... No, we haven't got a hat-trick of European trophies because it would be 23, 25, and 26. So, there is a year gap. But, yeah, three European trophies. 
seven domestic cups, four domestic leagues, two community shields, two super cups, and the world club cup, which isn't on this list and should be. But we did win that. Huh. Okay. Interesting. We are legends. Of course we are. Uh, the board don't really care. We paid not a lot actually out for that. Not a lot. But uh, Ben beat you with 10 goals in the competition. Assistant manager. We do have a new assistant manager. We've got Harry King. Um, doesn't quite fit the way we play. But almost. Um. Almost. He's only just come in, but his model sits some with great stats. So, we um, almost terminate this contract for some reason. But yeah, he comes in now. Don't know what I'm looking for. I really don't know what I'm looking for. But yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not loving his reply there. I don't think it was a foregone conclusion. It was certainly not a walkover, as he's claiming. But it will look like that with a 92nd minute consolation goal. Three goals in 20 minutes. And just a dominant start. At, at, you know, to open up the second half. I mean, it will look that way. Including that missed penalty. But the stats will lie to you. That was not a good performance. That was not a great game. I was a little worried about... How we played as Sociedad, how bad we were at the back. But at least going forward, we were kind of on the ball and getting things done. Um, yeah, this is a little more concerning. So, Sheffield United away to give ourselves a chance at that second hat-trick. And get our third FA Cup in a row. Then it's back to the Premier League for a few games. Making sure we advance in the Champions League. And seeing what unfolds. After the first leg, PSG hold an advantage. Real Madrid hold a slim advantage, as do us going back home for the next leg. Uh, and Ajax took advantage of their home leg against Bayern Munich. Everything else is even, but away goes for Leipzig, Lyon, and Man United. Man City Inter, very, very height as well as a nil nil draw is the only thing there i don't fear anyone i think we're good enough to beat anyone uh, i don't think there's an easy team going into the next round the easiest possibly could be a leipzig or porto winner or ajax coming through but then they would have beaten bay munich so just how easy could that be maybe leon would be next up on that list I'm really not sure who I'd want. Uh, I'd probably take an English team as well because we're used to playing them. We've shown that we can beat them. Inter, don't worry me too much. Benfica, wouldn't worry me. Yeah. Juventus, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Bayern Munich, PSG. I think those are the grouping we don't really want to face until the final, if we're honest. We have beaten Barcelona and Real Madrid quite a few times now. It's um, been quite surprising how often we've played them, to be fair. But I don't know what that pathway holds, but a very tough group left in that. Uh, the fifth round as well, I expect United, Tottenham, Chelsea, West Ham, Arsenal. And then I don't know the others, really. Don't know the others. What for them? Villa, tight game, maybe. Right now, Villa are playing quite well, but wouldn't put it past Watford. They do have the home tie there. And then Bournemouth and Norwich. Again, you've got to fancy Norwich. They are at home, but Bournemouth, not a bad team in the championship. So we'll see how that works out. If we get one of those, it's an easier draw than anyone else, to be fair. A West Ham likely winners could be... Uh, a nice a nice one to get if there's an upset in another game. Sure, we will take them. Wolves and Arsenal, they're right together in the league. I think fifth and sixth at the moment as well. So, 
That could be a tight game, but I would expect Arsenal to go through and be the tougher opponent for us. Um, in the league, Man United get their big 4-1 win. Chelsea get their big 4-1 win on the road. We don't gain any points over anyone. And Bristol City, Leicester, ourselves a Man City, of course. With that game in hand. We'll see how far we can push this. We can get a 20-point gap back on Man United if we win our game in hand. And we can get back that 13-point, sorry, 14-point advantage over Liverpool. Other than that, Team Cohesion looks amazing. Club atmosphere is supreme. Managerial support is really good. Hierarchy looks really healthy. We have six highly influential players. Only too influential, but you know, people like Carlos Vita playing first team football will probably uh, get up there. Mitch Joins, I guess, could get up there. A lot of game time for Sant as well. Uh, maybe not Matthews or Bevan at this stage. Yeah, I'd expect them to creep up into influential, to be fair. I really would. But I like where we are. I like the fact that Facey's up as a team leader. And then we've basically got the four, uh, you know, Mbappe, Reina, Camavinga, and Delit all in the highly influential, alongside Declan Rice and Ben Beachy. So, they're, they're in great company. And then Cosme Munoz. I think kind of the levels where people are, are right, captain, vice-captain, Facey maybe... A little bit of a surprise when you've got some of these world superstars. You've got Ben Beachy, the club legend. You've got Declan Rice, who fits in with the other team leaders there. But um, everyone's on board. Everybody's in a giant core group, apart from Mefum, Fasi, and Kamavinga. So that's quite interesting. I wonder if they're all going to amalgamate into one. I think it's Kamavinga that's the one stopping that from happening. Uh, Uregard, Leroy Sane, Demir Kulusevski, and Erling Haaland. Don't think we're going to pick up any of those. Carlos Vita wants a new contract. He's just got his new money in. Like, I mean, just got that new money in. I think he was on 50 before that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've got an extra year we can exercise, but he's at his max right now, so we'd have to do that um, at the end of the season, but we could put him uh, on another year deal as it is. I think he's been good enough. I really do. So, you know, 27 games, nine goals conceded, and eight, uh, sorry, 19 clean sheets. So, of those goals conceded, he scored... That's how he scored. He's been scored against twice in one game and one in the other eight. So even when he's conceded, he's yet to have a bad game. Like, nine save tips, 12 saves parried, 44 held. He doesn't give up the ball. Man of the match once, 85% passing, 7.14. It's pretty good in the league. It is pretty good in the league. Champions League again conceding twice only once the other two appearances single goals um with four clean sheets a little more parries to, to saves held to be fair but good passing it's good all over uh, i'm really enjoying seeing him play eight million absolute bargain got him young i think we can do a new deal I believe we can do a new deal. Not even a four-star player yet. Still growing. Still a teenager. He's going to join a few other players up on that quarter of a million mark. And we'll give him five million loyalty bonus. We're going to give the agent a SEM 50. I want that contract extension back. I do want that contract extension back. We're going to try and downgrade that clean sheet as well. So 50... If he plays 50 for a clean sheet, he can earn up to 350 a week um, if he plays and keeps a clean sheet, of course. 5 million up front, 750 to the agent. 
and a potential five-year deal. He doesn't want five. Okay, well, in that case, I'm just going to bump these up. And that takes him to 400,000 if he keeps a clean sheet. And the agent bumped up to a million trying to buy this deal. And the wage, I guess, changes, but doesn't really change. So I guess he's maybe as much as 260 in effect or 254 or something like that. Don't know what changed, but okay. That's fine. I'll do that deal to keep everybody happy. Munoz is satisfied with training. What's up in training? I don't know what's up in training. Defensive positioning is working quite well. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure why that's gone down. And rams them once game time, which just isn't happening. And we do have a we do have a, a promise here, which I guess we just slightly broke. We didn't rest Gio Reyna for that game. We kept the promise for when we should have. Maybe that's why Reyna didn't play well. And maybe that's what held us back. He wasn't going into that game lacking conditioning and match sharpness. That has given him match sharpness, to be fair. So maybe not the worst idea of all. I'm going to give two days off to those boys. I'm going to give a day off to all these boys. I might have given two days off. I'm not really sure. Yes, I did. Okay. In that case, screw it, boys. Everybody take a day off. I'll see you for Sheffield United, boys. I'll see you, I'll see you for Sheffield United. Um, didn't really mean to do that, but yeah, I think that's, um, that's fine. We need the rest. We're, we're coming into that, that crunch of fixtures as well, a little bit. Like January, we played so many games. You know, first, fourth, seventh, tenth, fourteenth, seventeenth, twentieth, twenty-fourth, twenty-seventh, thirty-first. Like we're just playing constantly. February's been a little kinder to us, but recently as well, you know, we, we take our break here, but then we're right back into it, 21, 25, 28. Now we've got the 3rd, the 7th, the 10th, the 14th, the 17th, the 22nd. A little bit of time off, but that will fill up with more FA Cup games and more Champions League games will be coming. So the breaks here will be compressed all the way through to the end of the season. But the Premier League looks good. We win the League Cup. The Champions League, we hold a small advantage and should be able to progress. And the FA Cup, we have a favourable draw for this round. Can we be perfect? No. But we can be invincible. I'll see you next time to see if we can get it done. Thoughts and comments in the section down below. Um, you know, smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you next time. Till then, take care, behave yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon, my friends. Till then, peace.